Welcome friends, uh, welcome to the special lecture symbolic expression and as sign language expert in the studio we have Manisha Sharma with us and the theme of today's topic is festivals in the series which we are doing on understanding popular culture. Today we will talk about the various kinds of festivals which we see in India. In the earlier lectures on the theme of understanding popular culture, we already discussed that how can we define popular culture, what are the various kind of connotations with regard to the popular culture and the kind of developments with regard to the popular culture which have taken place in the Indian society and today we will talk about the various kinds of festivals which we find in the framework of the Indian society and culture and how these uh, festivals they have been categorized into different kinds of classification uh, being whether the religious festivals or tribal festivals or other kinds of festivals and how they are important from the point of view of the Indian cultural practices and how they symbolize in the kind of participation of the people in these particular kinds of festivals as well. So, all this we will just try to discuss and we will try to enumerate some of the important points which are concerned with the kind of festivals and also fairs which are there in India. In the context of uh, the source material, one can refer to the source material of the School of Open Learning, University of Delhi then Carol E. Henderson, Culture and Customs of India, L.P. Vidyarthi, Edited Essays in Indian Folklore, Papers Presented to the Centenary Festival of Rai Bahadur S. Siroy, then Makhanjha, Edited Dimensions of Pilgrimage and Anthropological Appraisal, Ved Prakash, Watuk Studies in Indian Folk Traditions. So, these are some of the readings which one can refer when one is talking about the various kinds of festivals which are being celebrated in India and how these festivals they are in a way important from the point of view of the cultural practices that also uh, we will try to discuss and how uh, we will also see that all these kinds of festivals how they are also associated with various regions and traditions of India. And at the same time many times when you talk about uh, the festivals how they are also being connected to the gods and goddesses as well. And in the context of the religious festivals uh, we can talk about Diwali, Holi, then Eid al-Fitr, then Guru Parab and uh, Easter and uh, uh, Christmas. So, all these kinds of festivals with regard to uh, the kind of celebrations which are happening in India can be talked about in the framework of the religious festivals. And when you talk about these kinds of festivals, we see that in different regions they are being celebrated in a different manner. And at the same time, the kind of changes uh, which we see o over a period of time in terms of celebrating the festivals, but the traditions they, all, they are also being maintained as well. So, in terms of categorization, uh, we find that the religious festivals or seasonal festivals for that matter, uh, cultural festivals and tribal festivals, all these, all these kinds of festivals they are being celebrated in India. And uh, when you talk to, when you try to talk about the various kinds of religious festivals in India, then we talk about Holi, Diwali, Eid, Christmas, Christmas, Noros, all these kinds of festivals which are being celebrated in India. And when you talk about that how these kinds of various festivals, they have different kind of dimensions in uh, the different parts of India, then we find that how the festival of colors, Holi is celebrated in the Fagun or February, March month of Indian calendar and it also marks the end of the lunar, lunar year's end. And this uh, is the end of cold season and the start of the hot season, uh, that way the summer's arrival could be seen. The Shera or Vijay Dashmi is one of India's largest festivals and we find that it also marks the culmination of Navaratra nine nights and is observed on the tenth day. And uh, depending upon where one is living in India, Navaratra emphasizes either the Durga Puja or the Ramalila and sometimes celebration of both as well. So, uh, we find that such kind of festivals, they are not only uh, there in terms of celebration where people are uh, celebrating it, they are getting enjoy, they are getting uh, all sorts of enjoyment. Uh, but at the same time, they also provide some kind of lessons as well, where we find that in the context of Durga Puja, how it focuses on the worship of Goddess Durga, 
and her victory of uh, buffalo demon mahishasur so uh, the way she defeated uh, mahishasur and uh, how the uh, victory of good over evil was uh, is also being symbolized it is also in the case of ramalila where it is presented as some sort of a drama which is celebrating uh, lord rama's exploit, exploits in the epic ramayan so we find that when you when when one is talking about the shehra and how Uh, the climax of the shehra it is trying to portray the victory of ram over ravan and it also symbolizes the triumph of good over evil so such kind of messages they are also being given in that context when one is trying to celebrate the various kinds of festivals and we also find that the shehra ends with the tor- torching of huge ravan effigies that the ravan effigies they are being burnt and this burning of ravan's effigies is also symbolic of uh, the burning of the evil forces which are there in that sense uh, when even holy is being burnt we find that how uh, the burning of the holy is also trying to convey that uh, prahlad who was associated with it uh, he he didn't he was not burnt because he was symbolizing the good forces and the other kinds of forces Uh, which were antithetical to the good forces which are the evil forces they got burnt so su- such kinds of festivals they try to in a way uh, communicate the rich traditions of india and at the same time uh, the idea of good versus bad is also being propagated through uh, such kinds of festivals we also find one of the most important festivals in the context of india is diwali where we find the festival of light and it is in the month of kartik october november and it is celebrated on new moon day amavasya and the lakshmi the goddess of wealth is worshiped on this day and this festival is associated with cleanliness and the lightening of homes and fireworks so we find that the celebration of diwali is one of the rather from the hindu point of view it is the most important fa- festival and it, the kind of uh, uh, planning which goes on for diwali is goes goes on for weeks and even months and we find that how it is also associated in terms of cleaning the houses and how people they decorate their homes and how they also engage in the fireworks as well so many a times we find that there are restrictions in terms of fireworks and nowadays Uh, because of uh, the pollution but we find that even then uh, the people they have this kind of a zeal to continue with si- such kind of traditions as well and uh, at the level of uh, the uh, at the level of uh, uh, the way people they celebrate this particular festival not only on that particular day but at the same time how they also engage in the gift giving where people so the, they also are given a lot of gifts during this particular time and uh, at the same time we also see that lakshmi who is the goddess of wealth is worshiped on this day uh, because people they feel that uh, if they will be able uh, to worship the goddess then they will be able to get a lot of prosperity so in this uh, context uh, we find that it is being celebrated as one of the biggest festivals of india uh, apart from that we have also seen that uh, in the context of hindus there are so many other festivals as well uh, whether it is rakshabandhan which is uh, being celebrated in generally in august uh, july august and we also find that it is uh, the kind of connection between a brother and a sister then we also see that uh, the other kinds of festivals which are related to sikhism is the guru nanak guru parab and on this day guru nanak was born in nanakana sahib which is now uh, situated in pakistan and every year six they celebrate this day with large scale gatherings candles diyas and lights uh, are lit in uh, gurudwaras in the honor of guru along with the fireworks and we find that the birthday celebrations Uh, usually they last 3 days so this is uh, the kind of festival where we find that the birthday of guru nanak sahib is being celebrated and uh, on this day we we find that how people they carry on for 3 days in terms of uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, a lot of duties with regard to uh, the way the the birthday is being celebrated and we find that 2 uh, days before the, the birthday 
अखंड पार्ट ऑफ द फोर्टी एट आर नॉन स्टॉप रीडिंग ऑफ गुरु ग्रंथ साहेब इज बींग हेल्ड इन द गुरुद्वारा एंड वन डे बिफोर द बर्थडे प्रोसेशन इज बींग ऑर्गनाइज विच इज लेड बाय पंच प्यारे फाइव बिलविड वन एंड पालकी पेलिंगक्विन ऑफ श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहेब एंड फॉलोड बाय द टीम्स ऑफ रागीज दो आर सिंगिंग हिम्स brass bands playing the different tunes and devotees singing chorus so this kind of uh, religious fervor is being uh, noticed in terms of uh, the celebration of the fest the festival where uh, the birthday of guru nanak sahib is being celebrated and then we find that uh, prakash utsav uh, dashme uh, pitahme shri guru gobind ji and this uh, festival name when translated means the birth celebration of the 10th divine light or the divine knowledge and it commemorates the birth of guru gobind singh who was the 10th sikh guru uh, and it is also being celebrated with lot of gust uh, gusto and uh, fervor and we find that vesakhi which is being celebrated in punjab as well which is also being celebrated in other regions in it is celebrated as the birth of khalsa brotherhood it is celebrated at a large uh, scale at kesgarh sahib anandpur sahib in india and uh, we find that in other parts in uk canada us and other sikh populated areas uh, the people they come together for a public mela or some kind of a parade so we find that uh, the in a way the celebration of Uh, such kind of festivals they not only provide people to come together and have uh, some kind of a brotherhood but at the same time we also find that they also give the kind of messages with regard to uh, the peace and the victory of good over evil in that sense in the context of other communities in india we find that the festival of muslims such as ramzan eid ul fitr muharram bakreed which is the feast of sacrifice etc they are celebrated according to the muslim calendar and the ritual year begins with the month of muharram and this marks the practice of muharram festival that commemorates martyrdom of husain uh, venerated by shia muslims as third imam or the leader of islam after the prophet muhammad so we find that uh, muslims in india are also celebrating a lot a lot of festivals and these festivals when they, they are also trying to communicate the spirit of sacrifice and at the same time that how one should devote one's life uh, to the religious uh, uh, rituals which are there and at the same time uh, the issue which is being concerned in these festivals is uh, to have some kind of a, a idea of peace and uh, communal harmony which is to be maintained and we also find that uh, during uh, the times of muharram we find a large uh, procession with tajia is being taken out and how the people those who are participating they cry out cry out the husain's name and some uh, devotees they even torture themselves with the knives uh, leashes and chains etc to uh, feel husain's travel during that point of time and also a small fair is being organized and in the late the afternoon we find that tazia is buried so we find that uh, the kind of festivals which are being celebrated those uh, by the muslims in india and uh, we find that how the prophet's birthday is also celebrated in the month of ramzan and the fast of the ramzan lasts the entire month and many observe fast between uh, dawn and sunset and the last day of the fast ends with the sighting of moon which marks uh, eid ul fitr and on this day we find besides observing observing fast alms are given to the poor and sweets are also being distributed and the end of ramzan is also the time of departure for muslims for hajj or pilgrimage to makkah so we find that various kinds of festivals uh, the, by the different communities in india they are being celebrated uh, in india and how these communities not only Uh, try to maintain the festive spirit but at the same time also try to incorporate uh, others to these kinds of festivals and uh, we also find bakreed or the feast of sacrifice celebrates uh, abraham's sacrifice of his son and goats are sacrificed on this day and meat is shared with friends and poor uh, apart from that we also find that the death anniversary or uds is an important aspect of the religious faith of the muslims and these are organized as the festivals and pilgrim visits 
uh, uh, the tomb of the saints and the committees are formed uh, to organize woods and the and on the anniversary day the shrine in bed and town uh, and the tomb of uh, saint is also being decorated so we find that how uh, the death anniversary uh, in in that way is also concerned with the religious faith and they are in a way also being celebrated as festivals and how the pilgrims they visit the tombs of the saints as well uh, and we we also find that on the anniversary day the shrine is in a way cleaned in that sense given a bath and the tomb of uh, saint is decorated as well then we also find that how the committees they plan the readings from quran traditional song sessions and food distribution and poetry readings they also undertake and we find that tours in india is at the ajmer shrine of saint munuddin chishti who was a famous saint of the chishti order and it is visited by thousands of pilgrims and a big fair is organized and this is being done every year and at the same time we find that apart uh, from the time when festivals are going on we also find that uh, such uh, kinds of uh, visits by so many of the pilgrims also takes place as uh, this particular shrine of munuddin chishti is very very popular in india we also find that apart from the festivals which are being celebrated by the hindus and the muslims uh, six we also find that there are others uh, in christianity those who also celebrate many festivals and these kinds of religious festivals and ceremonies which are uh, being celebrated by the christians uh, where we find that the birthday of jesus christ is one of the most important festivals which is celebrated Uh, by the christians and uh, Christ, uh, christmas means uh, the christ mass or mass celebrating feast of christ nativity uh, which is observed every year on 25th uh, december so in this we find the children they also wait for legendary santa claus who brings the popular gift that way so in that sense uh, we find that all the festivals of india and they are not only being celebrated by the communities which are uh, believe in that particular faith but there are others also those who many a times uh, become part of such kind of festivities and uh, we find that when uh, christmas is being celebrated in india then we find that uh, not only the christians but there are so many others those who also engage in terms of celebrating of these festivals uh, we also find that apart from uh, the, these kinds of festivals which we have discussed we also find that there are other festivals of the hindus and not only hindus muslims christians and sikhs but there are other communities uh, like buddhists and jains also and how they have their own particular festivals which are being celebrated uh, by them and uh, we find that when uh, you talk about in the context of india it is very very important in the sense that india being a hindu majority country but at the same time there are so many uh, so many communities living in india and which calls for some kind of a composite culture and composite identity in that sense and when all the communities of india when they uh, celebrate the different festivals then they provide a different uh, kind of a color or zing to these festivals and the way uh, the people of different communities they celebrate celebrate each other's festivals it also provides some kind of a sense of security to each other and it also in a way uh, in a way sh- uh, cherishes the composite culture which is there in india so apart from uh, christmas we also find that the Uh, the way the festival is being celebrated where the baking of the special foods and the singing of special songs called carols that is also uh, being done and which have a lot of mass appeal uh, in that context we also find uh, where the easter is considered to be one of the most important of all uh, the christian feast and it celebrates passion death and especially resurrection of jesus christ so easter is celebrated on the first sunday after first full moon following uh, the spring equinox so in that sense uh, we find that apart from christmas easter is also 
celebrated and the kind of ideas which are associated with Easter where we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, that is also being uh, talked about and uh, the way it is being uh, celebrated by the Christian community it also in a way uh, gives uh, the kind of idea to others as well that uh, how they have to celebrate these festivals uh, with each other and how when people are different faiths are celebrating these festivals then uh, they provide a lot of support to each other and it also leads to the idea of peace as well. So, we find that when you talk about Easter, it was fundamentally a nocturnal feast preceded by a fast of at least one day and the celebration they take place uh, from Saturday evening until early morning hours of Sunday and the kind of symbolism of light, it became a significant feature of this particular festival. So, we find that how uh, uh, this particular festival is a festival associated with night and uh, how people when they uh, engage in this particular festival then they how they celebrate it uh, till the uh, till the morning of the next day and uh, how the symbolism of light as the light is not only uh, some kind of an electricity in that sense but light in the way that how light can in a way uh, reduce the all sorts of darkness which is around and this darkness is not in the literal uh, meaning or in the literal sense, but this darkness is also uh, uh, the darkness of illiteracy, darkness of evil and how all sorts of issues which are there with regard to uh, the, 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 the kind of um, evil which is existing in the society and how the symbolism of light can remove that particular evil. Uh, that is also very very important uh, with regard to Easter. Uh, so, we find that when uh, when we are celebrating all these festivals in India, when how the different communities are celebrating these kinds of festivals in India, uh, they not only come closer in that particular context that uh, they are now uh, uh, one in that sense and how people from different regions for that matter when they are also celebrating the festivals of each other and the kind of regional variation uh, which is also found in the fe the way festivals are being celebrated across India. So, we will find that though the name of the festival uh, is the same, but the way it is being celebrated for example, Holi or Diwali for that matter, uh, we find that they the, they the people they celebrate them in different manners and uh, the local traditions, local customs, uh, they influence these particular festivals when they are being uh, celebrated. So, in that context when one is talking about the idea of festivals in India uh, and we generally talked about the kind of festivals which are in the context of the religious festivals and uh, we will further talk about the other kinds of festivals uh, which are there um, in our next lectures. Uh, thank you very much.